Ooh. That's <laughs> fine. Did it start it? Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm a little technical difficulty here. Okay, we're doing uh, Kirchhoff's Laws. Uh, so this is the second lab that we've done today. Uh, obviously, you guys don't have to do them both in one day, but uh, this will give you something to do while you're, you know, hanging around. So uh, Kirchhoff's, the thing that, the main thing about this lab that you're gonna have to do is uh, some math. You're gonna have to solve three equations with three unknowns. So I wanna show you an example. Kirchhoff's Laws, there's two of them. There's the junction rule, and then there's the loop rule. The junction rule simply states that electrons aren't lost at the junction. So whatever current's coming in is equal to the current going out. So in this case, uh, and you choose the direction of the current. So if you happen to be wrong, you'll get the current is negative, which means you've chosen the wrong direction. So I've chosen I1 to be into the, the junction, I2 and I3 are leaving the junction. So therefore, I1 equals I2 plus I3. So that's the first one and that's from the junction rule. Then I'm going to look at what goes on in this loop here. And when we look at the loop, we're looking at voltage. So voltage is basically an energy situation. And so whatever the energy is at a position, whatever the potential energy is here, it's got to be the same when we get back. So going around this loop adds up to zero, basically. So if I start here, I go, notice that this goes from negative to positive, that's from low to high potential. And so this is two volts, I've just chosen that. We, we're using D cell batteries. Uh, we've got two of them in series, which means it's a, a sum of about 1.6 plus 1.6. Uh, but I'm just using two volts for this example. I'm not gonna give you the uh, solution to your problem here. Uh, so going for the loop, I go from zero to two, so plus E1. Now I'm getting a voltage drop. Ohm's law says that V equals IR, and that's a voltage drop across a resistance. And so the current is I1, and we've chosen this resistor to be six ohms. So, uh, so I've got plus two minus I1 R1 minus I2 R2, and I'm back here to zero again. So that equals zero. E1 minus I1 R1 minus I2 R2 equals zero. In this loop, I'm gonna do the same thing, start here plus two minus I3, R3. But then notice what happens here. The direction of I2 that I've chosen is in this direction. So this is actually at a higher potential than this is here. So I'm going plus two minus this voltage drop, uh, but then this is gonna be plus because this is at a higher potential than that. So this is gonna be two minus I3, R3 plus I2, R2, and that's this equation here. Uh, then you've just got to put those, I put the numbers in, what the resistances are. So your three unknowns obviously are the currents. Uh, so I1 equals I2 plus I3. Here is my first equation, two minus six I minus four I2 equals zero, and then two minus 10 I, three plus four I2. So that's plus four I2 there equals zero. So now I've got two equations. I've got three equations and three unknowns. What I'm gonna do is replace I1 with I2 plus I3. Here, reorganize, I get two minus 10 I2 minus six I3 equals zero. And my second equation is still the same, uh, two plus four I2 minus 10 I3. Uh, yeah, I just rearrange the I2 and the I3, get them in the same order. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna eliminate, what am I eliminating? I2, so I'm multiplying this equation by two, this equation by five, that'll give me 20 I2, and that's one is plus and one is minus, and so I'll eliminate those two. So I get four minus 20 I2 minus 12 I3 equals zero. Uh, when I do that uh, math here, and then for this one here, when I multiply by five, I get 10 plus 20 I2 minus 50 I3 equals zero. And then I just uh, solve for I3 because the I2s go away. So add these two equations together, you get 14, no I2s, minus 62I3 equals zero, 14 minus 62I3 equals zero. Uh, take the 62I3 to the other side, divide by 62, and you get I3 equals 14 over 62. And so the uh, current for I3 is 0.226. Then I just plug that value in here, uh, two minus 10, 10 times 0.226 plus 4i2 equals zero. Solve for i2, I get 0.065, and then go back to this equation here, 
add 0.065 plus 0.226 and get 0.291 for uh, that current. So that's basically what you're gonna do using different numbers. So do we need to re-aim that thing now? So this is the current that we, I mean the uh, uh, circuit that we have set up here. So we've got two batteries here. And so that turned out to be actually three volts. We had two batteries there that turned out to be 3.1 volts. Uh, this resistance was 10 ohms. This resistance was 100 ohms. This resistance was 33 ohms. Now we don't have a good ammeter per se. And so what we did is we took the voltage drops across these resistances. And from that we can calculate the current using Ohm's law. And I've done that for you actually in all of these. So these are our experimental values. What you're gonna do is do the math like I did over there solve for I1, I2, and I3 based on these voltages and these resistances and see how close they are to these. Actually, you're seeing how close we came to getting the right answer. So uh, is I1 in fact 0.02 amps? Because you're gonna have the actual value. This is the experimental value. Hopefully we did a good job doing these. Uh, let me run down these for you. So the voltage drop across the 10 ohm was 0.203 volts easy to calculate the current from that. We simply divide the 0.203 by 10 and you get 0.02 amps. Voltage drop across the 100 ohm was 2.8 volts. And so by 2.8 by 100, again, pretty easy, 0.028. And then the voltage drop across the 33 ohm was 0.314 volts. And so we got 0.0095 amps for the current there. Now, in this, I guess we could check real quick to see if they add up properly. Uh, I think I can see that they're off a little bit um, because I1 equals I2 minus I3. Okay, let's, let's do it this way. I2, I'm sorry, I1 and I3 go into this junction and I2 goes out. So I'm going to give you the first equation. Uh, I1 plus I3 equals I2. So if we look at this, I1 plus I3 is actually 0 0.0295 as compared to 0 0.028. So we're off by 3%, give or take, maybe 4%, something like that. Eh, not too bad for two guys that don't know what they're doing with the circuits. Here. And, uh, and let's show them the circuit that we got here. Uh, so if you can make heads or tails of this, you're doing better than us. So we had two switches because we wanted to be able to turn it on and off pretty quick because if you leave these currents going through these resistors, you'll actually heat the resistors up, which changes the resistance, or you'll simply burn the resistors up. So uh, that's why have, we have these switches on here. And so here's the positive side of this is E1. So it goes through this wire, which has zero resistance, supposedly. Uh, and this is through the 10 ohm resistor here. And then that's connected to the uh, R2, which is the 100 ohm resistor, and goes back to the uh, negative side of this battery. It also goes to um, the positive side of this battery, and then it connects to, to this resistor. But anyway, this circuit here, is the equivalent of that circuit there. So in a way, it was a lot better to do this with just James than having four groups set up with everybody trying to do their circuit and saying, is mine right, is mine right? Because looking at all these wires, it takes a while to analyze it and make sure it's in the right, right shape. So uh, this is our multimeter that we used. We checked what the ohmage was, what the uh, resistance was of the resistors. Then we checked the voltage drops across the resistors in order to calculate the, uh, the current. So that's pretty quick rundown on this. Obviously, if you have any questions, James took pretty good notes, so he can probably answer them. And, and if you have some problems there, uh, certainly email me. In fact, I've, since I've got you all here right now, uh, I've got office hours from one to three, Monday through Friday, but email me prior to that, because otherwise I may not check my email during that time or something. So. Uh, set up something if you need it either for class or for lab. All right, thanks. You guys have a good day.